Now, last speaker of this morning's lecture is Dimitri Klierov from Freiburg, and he's going to talk about uh, categorical approach to the higher residual value. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for having me here and um, for organizing a very nice excursion yesterday. I really enjoyed it. Okay, so uh, let me start with a piece of motivation for my talk. So uh, as, uh, uh, as you know, uh, in the early 90s, uh, Kansevich came up with Mirror symmetry uh, conjecture, uh, which says roughly that if you have a, a, a mirror pair of Calabi-Yau manifolds X and X check, then uh, the derived Fukai category uh, associated to one of them uh, should be equivalent to the bounded derived category of coherent shifts on the other one. So this is homological mirror symmetry uh, conjecture, but uh, there is also homological mirror symmetry uh, program. So uh, of course, uh, uh, the main uh, uh, goal of this program is to establish this conjecture. Uh, and also, uh, one would like to, to be able uh, uh, to reduce at least some um, some pieces of the classical of the classical. Uh, uh, Mirror symmetry uh, from from the homological uh, mirror symmetry conjecture. Well, and perhaps there are more things to it. So, uh, for example, um, uh, we would like to have some uh, uh, construction say black box with the following properties. If you, if you uh, fit it, uh, the Fukai category uh, on the Calabi-Yau manifold, it uh, spits out uh, a quantum cohomology or uh, more precisely the uh, uh, Fabenius manifold that you uh, uh, built uh, from uh, a Grom of Witten, uh, from the Grom of Witten variance of X check. If you fit it, uh, the uh, bounded derived category of coherent shifts on X, it spits out the uh, Baranikov Kansevich Fabenius manifold. And uh, of course, it should be uh, uh, uh. is it really necessary? Maybe I can. And of course, you want this construction to be applicable uh, outside of this mirror symmetry uh, uh, context, uh, but in a similar uh, situation. For instance, if you, uh, if you fit the same construction, the category of matrix factorizations of an isolated uh, critical point of some uh, uh, analytic function germ, it should spit out the uh, Yogi uh, 
Frobenius manifold on the unfolding space of the singularity. Okay, so let me use F. Uh, Yeah, of course, this is too optimistic. Uh, probably it's, it's, it's impossible to, to recover uh, uh, the, the such things from, from, uh, uh, from a category. But at least we can try to recover some formal germs of Frobenius manifolds. That may be, uh, <coughs> it's already not too bad. Uh, um, so in my uh, uh, latest work, uh, I have been trying to uh, uh, to reconstruct uh, 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 some parts of Sciatos' uh, uh, theory from uh, starting from the category of matrix factorizations. Well, I don't under, uh, understand uh, uh, all the details yet, so I will present my results from a slightly different perspective. I will uh, um, I will explain uh, how you can recover some pieces of, uh, of the classical Hodge theory uh, of isolated singularities starting from the categories of matrix factorizations. So let me remind you uh, some basic facts from this uh, Hodge theory of uh, isolated singularities. Okay, so uh, suppose F is a polynomial in n variables. Uh, such that uh, the origin of uh, Cn is, uh, is an isolated Singular uh, critical point, critical point of uh, F, and so I will assume in addition that the critical value is zero. Okay, so F is a, is a global object. I, I, I don't care about the, uh, 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 some other possible critical uh, points or loci. So let's. Uh, get rid of them. Okay, so uh, six two small numbers, epsilon delta, so the uh, and uh, 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 a small ball. CN and uh, a small disk. In C and uh, and uh, uh, consider the, the map induced by F from uh, U delta intersected with 
the preimage of this disk to this disk. So uh, this, this is a map induced by F. Formally speaking, it's a different map, so let me <coughs> denote it like this. Okay, so this is a standard, uh, uh, standard uh, geometric way to, to kind of forget about uh, uh, other critical points of this F. And so uh, uh, if these two numbers are small enough, then uh, the cohomology of this, uh, 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 of, of the fibers of this new map, so here T is, 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 a, uh, is a point in the complement in, in the punctured uh, uh, in the punctured disk, so the cohomology of these fibers are uh, so here. Uh, this is a reduced cohomology, but let me keep writing h. Is non-trivial in in degree n minus one only. So this is the result of uh, John Milner. So that's the only uh, interesting uh, cohomology group if you stay close enough to the critical point and the critical value. At the end of, uh, or maybe in the middle of, uh, of the 70s, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, Steinbrink uh, 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 proved that this Homology group carries uh, a polarized mixed <coughs> Hodge structure. Okay, so what is uh, I'm not gonna write down the full definition, uh, but let me uh, remind you the shape of the definition. So, the, so a polarized uh, pure core structure of uh, weight K on a complex vector space uh, comprises uh, the following data. Uh, 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 HQ, so this is a lattice, a, a Q lattice. In H, now a uh, decreasing uh, filtration, um, the hot filtration, and the uh, 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 so this is a. Uh, Filtration. And F is a pairing on this uh, rational lattice. So, what are the properties? Uh, without this S, this is just a uh, Hodge structure of weight K. And this S satisfies uh, uh, the following property. belongs to HP uh, D K minus P. So this is as usual at P intersection. Uh, 
Now, uh, a polarized mixed Hoche structure is a generalization of this notion uh, where you add to this list of uh, things one extra datum. So uh, uh, the first three uh, 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 components in this topo uh, have the same meaning as before, and they satisfy some of the properties we had before. And uh, this is an important endomorphism. HQ, which is uh, compatible with uh, 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 um, with the rest of of, uh, uh, of, uh, of the data, uh, compatible in the following sense. First of all, it is compatible with this number k. It is also here. It is compatible in the uh, with this filtration. This is. We saw this property in the previous talk, actually. And it is compatible with this uh, pairing in the following sense. So this is not a full uh, definition. There is also a, a, a long list of properties that these uh, um, these things uh, have to, to, to satisfy, and uh, well, there is no any weight filtration in this definition, but uh, uh, the list of properties involves a weight filtration. You construct it from this endomorphism. Any neopotent endomorphism of the vector space gives rise to canonical filtration of the vector space. Okay, so. Uh, Now let me uh, say a few words uh, uh, about uh, how these, uh, what what these H, Q, F, S, and N uh, look like in the case of uh, uh, of the singularities. Some of, some of these things admit uh, a Betty type description, a topological description. Some uh, admit a Duram type description, and some uh, admit both. So let me start with the Betty picture. So this is, of course, just to the image of uh, the cohomology groups with rational coefficients. Now you have uh, 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 a monodromy transformation acting on this, the monodromy transformation acting on this uh, cohomology group. You just go counterclockwise around the origin in the, in the, uh, in, in, in uh, in the punctured disk, and you get a, a transformation. So N is the log of the nilpotent part of 
them another. Now this pairing S, so it can be uh, written in terms of of the monodromy. Uh, a well-known isomorphism from Hn, uh, uh, from the n minus first cohomology to uh, Hn minus first homology and, and the pairing. This isomorphism is called the uh, variation map, the singularity theory. Okay, so uh, that's it. The Hodge filtration doesn't have any topological description. All right, so here, uh, so the, the, the Durand description uses uh, uh, the, uh, 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 the language of uh, the twisted Durand complexes that we uh, saw in the previous talk, but in, uh, in this setting, everything is simpler, so. Let me remind you the definition. So I I I, uh, I take the uh, uh, the space of germs of holomorphic uh, forms on uh, C N at the origin. And I consider the uh, the formal series in some variable, formal variable u, uh, with coefficients in this in this vector space. Now it carries the the uh, this differential, right? Now it turns out that the cohomology of this complex is non-trivial in degree n only. And so we can treat uh, Let's view, let's view this uh, non-trivial cohomology group as a, uh, as a vector bundle on, on, uh, on the punctured formal disk with uh, coordinate u. Now this bundle uh, uh, comes equipped with uh, with a connection. Okay, let me denote it somehow.
namely uh, the connection uh, is induced by the uh, okay let me put a super, uh, sub, uh, superscript here from the differential operator acting on, on, on the complex you can uh, easily check that uh, this differential operator descends to the cohomology. And uh, 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 this bundle also comes uh, uh, with, a uh, with an extension over the origin of this punctured U disk. Namely, you just uh, you just replace the the, the uh, uh, formal Laurent series here with uh, uh, with the ordinary formal series. This is a three module over. Uh, over the ring of formal series of the same rank as, as the, that vector space. So it turns out that this connection, even though it has a form of uh, order two, at the origin, it has a regular singularity at the origin. So let me uh, denote uh, the connection induced on the cohomology by the same letter, just to avoid. <coughs> uh, complicated notation. So we have a triple uh, finite dimensional uh, uh, vector space over this field. A connection on this linear space. regular singularity at, uh, at the origin and we have a lattice and there is a, 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 a general theory well I don't know how to how to uh, title it uh, the theory of, of uh, holonomic regular D modules uh, in one variable, see, that uh, produces out of such uh, triples uh, a complex vector space uh, with a monodromy transformation and the Hodge filtration. So there is a preprint by, uh, by Claude Sabat, uh, uh, non-commutative Hodge structure. So the first few sections is a quick introduction to, to this construction. So if you start, if you apply this, uh, this theory in this setting, uh, uh, you will get a complex vector space isomorphic to uh, the n minus first cohomology of the Milner fiber, uh, uh, so. singularity, theoretic example. 
example. Uh, with a filtration that will be isomorphic to the Steinberg filtration and uh, uh, with, a, uh, with an endomorphism uh, uh, isomorphic to the monogamy transformation. So that's, uh, uh, that's how you, uh, you derive uh, uh, part of those uh, 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 components of the mixed Hoch structure using the DRAM approach. Now, it turns out that uh, uh, the pairing S also has a DRAM type description. Uh, it turns out that it can be expressed uh, uh, in terms of uh, what is known as the higher residue pairings on, on the twisted Dirac cohomology. pairings were invented but discovered by uh, Kyoshi Saito 30 years ago. So uh, Are these pairings usually one? Uh, uh, so it's actually one pairing, but uh, you can uh, consider its expansion uh, in U, and the coefficients of this expansion are called high residue pairings. But so let me call this single pairing uh, the high residue pairing. So this is a pairing on. Uh, already had notation, sorry. Uh, which is, first of all, it's not quite bilinear. It's linear in the following sense, so. It is linear uh, uh, in the first argument. And it's anti-linear in this sense in the second argument. So this is the first property. There is also a flatness property. And uh, uh, finally, KF, this is probably the most kind of remarkable property in combination with the flatness. KF turns out to extend the usual, the ordinary Grothendieck residue pairing in the following sense.
So we have this lattice uh, inside HF. So if you restrict this pairing, then it takes values here and modular higher uh, uh, powers of u. This is just a rigid pairing. Given two uh, top degree holomorphic forms on CN, uh, the, the strategy pairing, I, uh, I, I remind you, is given by the following formula. In a recent paper, uh, uh, Saito and two uh, uh, co-authors So it's a paper in the archive. I, I don't remember the, 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 the number. It's, uh, it's called primitive forms via uh, polyvector fields, something like this. So they give a very nice formula, or, uh, although a bit complicated uh, for, for this thing. Uh, So, a nice, complicated formula for KF. So, roughly speaking, what you do is you can you you, you construct a, a, a quasi isomorphism between that uh, complex that I. Uh, uh, discussed previously, the twisted DRAM complex, and a similar complex where you replace the holomorphic forms by uh, 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 C-infinity forms with compact supports. This quasi-isomorphism is, is very complicated, but uh, there is an explicit formula. And then the, the, the high residue pairing uh, is built by, uh, as a combination of this quasi-isomorphism and the usual integral of uh, compactly supported forms. Okay, uh, so suppose A is a DG algebra. So in my talk, the DG algebra means uh, 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 differential Z mod two graded algebra. So uh, uh, associated with this, uh, 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 with any DG algebra is uh, what is known as a mixed cyclic complex. So 
So here, uh, this part is known as a uh, uh, Hochschild complex of A. It's a canonical complex associated to A, so it's, it is very functorial. For instance, this uh, space So you have to shift gradients, uh, it's not important right now. And B is, is a very uh, natural canonical operator on, this, on these uh, tensors. And B is, uh, so this is a Hochschild complex. And B is called a, a, a cons differential. Uh, it's another uh, very canonical uh, operator on, on, on this uh, vector space. The two Bs uh, anti-commute and square to zero, so... Uh, hmm? Means uh, Lode Quillen differential or... Okay, uh, so <coughs> 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 Here, the sum, direct sum. Okay, so you can, uh, 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 from this mixed complex, you can uh, construct two complexes that resemble what we had before. Again, u is just a formal variable. The cohomology of this complex is known as the uh, uh, periodic cyclic cohomology of uh, A. This is a vector space of uh, uh, the field of formal Laurent polynomials. And uh, the cohomology of this complex is known as uh, the negative cyclic homology of A. Now, this uh, observation is due to, uh, uh, to, uh, to many people, uh, Katsarkov, Kansevich, Pantiev, uh, Soberman, and maybe Baranikov. I'm not quite familiar with this, uh, with the history of the subject, but uh, it turns out that the, uh, for any A, this uh, uh, periodic cyclic homology carries a canonical connection. If I had more time, uh, I would explain where it comes from. It's really easy. Actually, maybe uh, I should tell you where it comes from. <coughs> So this 
partial differential is the sum of two components. So B0 uh, uh, is simply uh, the differential on, uh, on, the, on the standard products induced by the differential on A. Uh, recall that A comes with a differential. It's, it's a complex of vector spaces in the first place. Now B1 is, uh, is, a, uh, uh, is a version of the, uh, uh, of the ordinary Horschel differential. Again, since we are in a graded uh, setting, we should take, uh, we should keep track of science. Not And B, uh, the capital B, um, has a fallen shape. You take the sum over all uh, possible cyclic permutations of the center. And you put one in front of every tensor, and you, you take some with, uh, with some signs. I have ten more minutes, right? We started a bit late, right? Okay. <coughs> and then uh, uh, it turns out that this component. B naught, if you multiply it by U, then it becomes uh, 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 null homotopic in this complex. There are two operators, E, e so that uh, U times B naught is, is a commutator uh, of this sort. And then this canonical connection comes from the following differential operator on the complex. Where gamma uh, counts uh, the length of the tensor. So uh, gamma of this tensor equals n times times tensor. All right. Now, if... Uh, so this, this uh, resembles the connection we had before. Now, if uh, the cohomology of this DG algebra is finite dimensional, uh, so uh, let me assume that it's non-zero, otherwise the, the everything is trivial here. Then uh, there is a canonical pairing on the periodic cyclic homology. It's uh, quite easy to, to describe. Again, it's, it's not quite linear. It's uh, linear in this argument and uh, anti-linear in this argument. Okay. It's a composition of several uh, maps. So uh, you start here, then you replace uh, this uh, periodic cyclic homology, uh, homology by the periodic cyclic homology of the uh, opposite DG algebra. It differs from A by uh, the order in, uh, in the product. And this replacement is uh, 
TU antilinear. Then from here, using a, a well-known QNET type morphism, you go to the periodic cyclic homology of this tensor product. Now A acts, uh, uh, this, this algebra, this DG algebra acts on A by these guys from the left and by these guys from the right. So you have a homomorphism from here to uh, the endomorphisms of A viewed as a complex of vector spaces. So since the periodic cyclic homology is functorial, you can map this space here. And this is known to be isomorphic to this uh, field of uh, formal Laurent polynomials. It is essential here that uh, the cohomology of A is finite dimensional. Okay, so my last, the last part of my talk is, is gonna be quite short. Uh, So uh, associated with F is a, D, uh, a differential graded category or even a triangulated category of uh, matrix factorizations of F. Uh, more, more precisely, it is associated to the critical point uh, that we uh, uh, we are interested in. The objects of this category are, uh, so let's, okay, first of all, let me view uh, F as the, uh, the formal series. So I'm in, uh, I don't care about its analytic properties anymore. So uh, yeah, I, can, I can view it as a, as a formal series. Let me denote the algebra of formal series by R. So the objects are super vector bundles on uh, this formal spectrum of R. Um, equipped with an odd endomorphism. Q such that Q squared equals the multiplication with F. For example, fix N uh, odd anti-commuting variables theta one, theta n, and consider polynomials with coefficients in R here. Uh, now fix uh, a decomposition of F of the following sort. And set Q equals So these are uh, partial derivatives here. You can check that uh, Q squared equals F. In fact, it was shown by uh, Dickerhoff that this matrix factorization is a generator of the category of matrix factorizations. It 
it's not important what it means precisely. Uh, but uh, a conceptual consequence of this is that you can, rep uh, you, instead of studying this category, you can study just the DG algebra of the endomorphisms of this, of this object. So this DG algebra uh, contains the same amount of information, informally speaking, contains the same amount of information as the category of matrix factorizations, at least from the point of view of homological algebra. Now, five years ago, uh, Ed Siegel discovered uh, uh, an explicit quasi-isomorphism, I, from, uh, from the uh, mixed complex of associated with the, the category or this algebra, they are sort of the same. To the geometric one. So it's a very explicit, but again, not very simple formula. It's a composition of several maps. <coughs> okay, so let me state uh, two results. So if you go, uh, so let me denote uh, the induced uh, map on the cohomology with uh, U's here inserted by I. So we have a canonical connection uh, here. Since this is just a DG algebra, there is a canonical connection. And if you go from here to there, apply the connection, go back, you get almost what you had before minus uh, some logarithmic term uh, that depends on the number of variables. This is a Tate twist in some sense. The second result. We have this DG algebra uh, has finite dimensional cohomology. There is a non-zero constant such that uh, these two pairings on the on the periodic cyclic homology of this DG algebra, uh, well. You can identify it like this. So you apply I and go to the geometric complex and apply site as high residue pairing, or you just apply this canonical pairing, and uh, these are up to a constant of the same things. Again, this is a sort of a Tate twist. It's not a categorical bar. Well, uh, conjecturally, const equals minus one to the power n. But this is a conjecture. This is a theory. <coughs> 